Good morning. Lord, we give you thanks for light, the light of your son Jesus coming into our lives. Enlighten and illumine us that we may worship you this day in spirit and in truth. Amen. Join with me, please, in the call to worship. It's printed in your bulletin and it's on the screens. The Lord be with you. What does God ask of us? Those who do so are welcome within God's house. We're going to sing. Uh, it's from more voices, but the words are on the screen. Let us build a house, verses 1, 3, and 5. Well, good morning, folks. A few announcements before we get started. First, I want to acknowledge that we are living on the land in the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Mississauga, and Ottawa peoples. They took care of this land. They used its resources. Now they are still here, and so are we, and we help with that task. Next question, where is the picture from? Down by the river. You can see where, where the, the spillway comes down, and that's, yep, that's, that's on the bridge. So, yep, right here in Clinton. A reminder that our congregational meeting is today after church. Um, on the, I know the bulletin says we're going down. We aren't. We're staying up here. We're going to get... Uh, well, Susan, we, we, there's parts of it we don't change. We're telling them to go downstairs and have coffee and also stay up here. Oh, well, stay up here. This is where they are, and I, now, does anybody want to tell us how it's going to work? Nobody wants to tell us how it's going to work. Well, follow your nose, you'll find the coffee and the cookies are probably going to be someplace near it. I think muffins today, so that's cool. Perfect, perfect. So you can get your, you, you can, and, and please stay, though, for the meeting. Please. Good, tea, water, and coffee. But it is decaf, so... Oh, well, it's always decaf. That way, Kathy gets to sleep at night. Okay, 
So that's our coffee time for today. Uh, upcoming meetings, property and finance and outreach are on Tuesday. Property and finance are at 6 and outreach is at 7. The UCW executive is at 9.30 on Thursday morning. Coffee Conversation in Christ is, we just had one last week, so this is two weeks now, almost, about 12 days from now. So come on out, everyone is most welcome. We have coffee and we talk. We do have a community volunteer income tax program here at the church, and we are looking for volunteers. So if you have, know how your way around a tax return, then please talk to Susan, and she would love to have some help with this. We have, I think, a couple of volunteers, but we, we need more. Uh, we showed them the video for Camp Minnesotung last week for their capital project. If you want to take part in that and help, then uh, please make your check out directly to Camp Minnesotung. Uh, we'd prefer not to run it through the church's books if you can send it to them. That would be great. Were there any other announcements I either forgot or did not know about? Nope. In that case, let's take a few minutes to pass the peace. Peace be with you.
Does everybody remember what that is? Just a hint, if you don't, it's in the bulletin. I made one a long time ago. It's a way of finding out whether or not things are straight. It's a way of measuring, of trying to figure out whether or not we're doing what we ought to do. Whether or not we're, oh, I don't know. I don't think it works on people. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't work on people. That's okay. But there are other things, other measures that do and that can. Just depends on what you're trying to measure. Sometimes we measure things by using numbers. Numbers are a good thing to measure things with. So I got curious. I did, I did. I got very curious about the church. And so I looked back. In 2018, you had 92 people in church. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Well, then in, in 20, so, so that was, sorry, that was 2018. So in, in 2019, that was the first year I was here, and I think they were curious. I say that sometimes people come to church when you have a new minister just because they want to make sure I know what they look like if I have to bury them. <laughs> so that year, the number was up to 98. The next year was 2020, and you can't really count 2020. It said we had 107. But that's because we shut down after the first three months, so you didn't have all... These are, these are annual numbers I have here, okay? We shut down three months into the year when the attendance was still good and not after we got into, you know, like the summer and stuff like that. So that number's a little off. The next year was 102. This year we're down to where we were with the first number I started, back to about 92. Now, you're looking around and saying, Kathy, I haven't seen that many people in church. But that's because for the last few years, you have to also count how many views we have online. And we assume online views are only one person. Okay. But, but like, I know for a fact that my parents watch it together. And you say, well, Kathy, you can't count your parents. Well, if they were sitting here, we'd count them. Yeah. So that, that's good. And I also know occasionally they show it up at, the, at uh, Huron View. And you could have five or 15 or 20 people watching it then, but one view. And we actually did have to count on the, first, the 2nd of October when I wasn't here. Because the Hearns very, very kindly did the service. And then they told all their friends and all their family members to watch it too, 139. <laughs> Just online. <laughs> Now, if only we could do that every week, right? Oh, man. So, yeah. So, th these are ways, ways of measuring. And that's, they're good ways and bad ways. And sometimes the numbers help us. And sometimes, well, they don't. But they're a means of finding things out. Much like the plumb line, it gives us one piece of information, at least, as to whether or not we're doing well. So, we're going to have our annual meeting today, and I think I'm going to talk to you some more about that when we get a little bit closer. But one of the things that we can use uh, as a plumb line for us is the information that's in the Bible. And the first reading today, we're actually singing, because it's actually the, um, it's 701, and we will be doing it sort of as a round, but sort of not, but that's okay, we're all good. And uh, it's the passage from Micah that says to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. And those, that would be an excellent plumb line for us to use on our lives. Or is that the way that we are living? So we're going to sing. So now you told me this before, so let's see if I remember and got it right, is that we're going to sing it through the three verses once, and then we're going to sing through two more time with three verses. But you get to pick which verse you want to sing. You can sing the same verse three times, or you can sing three different verses, but once we get to the end, she'll stop playing and we'll stop. How's that be? Okay? Excellent. <laughs>
beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to do the psalm. Sorry, I'm not giving you a lot of time to move, am I? No, no, that's okay. Uh, so that was our first reading, and we sang it. And now we're going to do the psalm. So it's, uh, on page, it's Psalm 15 on page 736. We will be doing it with the refrain. God, who may be a guest in your house? Or who may dwell on your holy mountain? We in your holy place, O God, who shall dwell in One who leads a blameless life. Who does what's right, who speaks truthfully from the heart. One whose tongue is free from malice. One who cannot respect the unworthy, but honors those who fear God. Who stands by a promise given, the well leads to personal disadvantage. One who will not take interest on a loan, nor accept a bribe to testify against the innocent. Whoever does this shall never be I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I'm reading verses 18 through 25. The message that points to Christ on the cross seems like sheer silliness to those hell-bent on destruction, but for those on the way of salvation, it makes perfect sense. This is the way God works, and most powerfully, as it turns out, it is written, I'll turn conventional wisdom on its head. I'll expose so-called experts as shams. So where can you find someone truly wise, truly educated, truly intelligent in this day and age? Hasn't God exposed it all as pretentious nonsense? Since the world in all its fancy wisdom never had a clue when it came to knowing God, God in his wisdom took delight in using what the world considered stupid, preaching of all things, to bring those who trust him into the way of salvation. While Jews clamor for miraculous demonstrations and Greeks go in for ph philosophical wisdom, we go right on proclaiming Christ the crucified. Jews treat this like an anti-miracle and Greeks pass it off as absurd. But to those of us who are personally called by God himself, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is God's ultimate miracle and wisdom all wrapped up in one. Human wisdom is so cheap, so impotent, next to the seeming absurdity of God. Human strength can't begin to compete with God's weakness. Weakness. Now we get to sing our next um, scripture lesson, and that is from Matthew 5, and it's the Beatitudes.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So I talked about the plumb line already with you this morning. It's a way of figuring out whether or not things are straight. Things are the way that we want them to be, the way we're planning on. And we had the, 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 the Micah passage, which we actually sang. What does the Lord require of you but to act justly, to uh, show mercy and to walk humbly with our God? And those are very, very good things to use as a plumb line, ways to live our lives. We can hold up what we're thinking about doing or what we just did and hold it up to that and see whether or not it measures up. Are we living the way that God wants us to. Well, the other reading we had today was the Beatitudes. And I'm not expecting you to be able to read those. You just sang them. So with any luck, you remember them. But I know that that's small. But there, there's, there's eight of them up there. So blessed are the poor. Yeah, it's up there. Not very clear. It's clearer up there than it is over there. Oh, well. The poor or the poor in spirit. I think that most of these are talking about how we should treat people who are this way as opposed to we want to be poor. Anybody here want to be poor? Anybody want to not know where they're, they're going to have a house tonight or food on the table? No? No, I didn't think so. So we, we should be taking care of the poor. Okay. My goodness, it's much, much easier to see up here than over there. Blessed are those who are grieving. How do we treat those who are grieving? Do we show them compassion? Hmm. They say that we should be gentle. That's probably a good idea. Being rough with people isn't good. We should be gentle. We should be merciful. Yes. These are all good touchstones. Pure. Okay. Think of it more like pure, unadulterated vanilla. There is nothing in the bottle but vanilla or maple syrup or whatever you want to choose, whatever you, you, your choice is. So pure in this case is not about being pure, but being like pure snow, as in only snow and not other bits in there as well. So single-minded and on track for one thing, focused. Persecuted. Yeah, we should not be persecuting people and we should be helping those who are being persecuted. Definitely not. This is not we want to be persecuted. Nope. Nope, nope. Righteous. Striving for what is right. Striving to do what is right. To live our lives that way. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. I know there's one more. There we are. There it is. It got stuck. Oh dear. Peacemakers. That's what the one is for that, is peacemakers. And that's definitely a good thing. We should be trying to maintain and to create peace within our families and within our world. Do you have some more slides for me? I really, really hope so. Okay, we're back to that one. Oh, good, we got it all there. Actually, it's easier to read now. It was really dark before. Now, now it's actually a little easier. Okay. Ah. So one of the things that we should have as a congregation, because those are really wonderful things that are for the whole, for everybody, but I think that we're having a meeting today, and one of the things we should be looking at is what are our, what's our vision, what is our mission. So you don't need to look at it, but it's actually printed on the front page of your annual report, because don't worry, I'm gonna put it up there for you. So a vision is where we think we would like to be. So that's what your vision statement is. Clinton United Church will strive to be 
a vibrant, welcoming community church for people of all ages growing in faith and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ through our words and deeds. So that's saying, where do we want to go? What do we want to be? What do we want to end up looking like? And that's your vision statement. But in order to get to where you want to be, you have to have a map. Now, a map is singularly useless if you don't know where you want to go. So we can have a lovely map of Ontario, but that doesn't help us get anywhere unless we've decided we want to go to Collingwood, for example. Your vision statement is a wonderful idea of where you want to go. Your mission statement is more like a map. It gives you some specific things that say, this is what we need to do in order to get to where we're trying to go. So you have your mission, which has your, your vision, the strategy of how to get there, and what your core value is. So let, let's have a look at your mission statement. With God's help, with Christ as our model, we, the congregation of Clinton and United Church, strive to be a welcoming, caring, healing, and justice-seeking family of faith. So let's have a look at it. So I think of all the things that are written there that the core value for you is to be that family of faith. To be that supportive group of people that sees the people that come within your walls as a part of your faith family. Now I quite agree that every family has its nuts. Every family tree, it has its nuts. It has the crazy uncles and the cat lady aunts. I quite agree, they, they, every family has those. But the thing is, you have the children that drive you nuts, but they grow up eventually, you hope. And it's a welcoming thing about all those people. It's not saying we're all the same, we're all alike, but it does say that we are supportive and helpful and loving towards the people that we view as part of our church family. Because I know I've talked to people who have said, I don't know how I would, how I would have gotten through fill in the blank, if it hadn't been for my church family. And that, that's, I think it's the core of what you're, you're doing. So let's have a look at some of the other things that are in there. One of them is to say that you are welcoming. And I would have to agree that I have seen that, that I have talked to people who have come to the church here who say that they have felt and were made very, very welcome. I have been in churches where the, I watched them and I was the only one to go up and greet someone who was new to the church that day. I was the only one. They believed themselves to be a very friendly church, and so they were. They were very friendly and helpful and talked to everybody that they knew before church. But if you were new, that was a little different. And it's something that you do well, and it's also something you have to be very intentional about because it is super duper easy to fall into that where you basically greet the people you know and you don't necessarily talk to the ones that you don't. And caring. I would have to agree that you are that too. When I look back at this past year and at the beginning of January, I fell down and broke myself. And the caring that I experienced from the people in the pews and from the leadership in the church that allowed me time to heal. And I know other churches where their ministers have fallen or done something similar, and they weren't there. They didn't help them. They didn't want to give them any time off. They used it as an excuse for why they shouldn't be there anymore. That's not you. You are caring. And not only towards me, I've seen it with other people too. You reach out and you care. Healing. You try and do that too. The people that are grieving in the church, the people that are hurt, that are alone, that are hurting, you reach out to them. I have seen you do it. It's not just for me. It's for you guys to do it, and it means a lot when you do. And you do. This is good. Okay, let's see. We're getting there. Justice seeking. Oh, my. All those, uh, is all that uh, food gone? Did you pick it up? They were closed, but how much was there? There was a lot of food. You guys brought food for the food bank last week. And there's a whole lot of it. 
And every couple of times, you, you have a look, have a look in, in your report. We do stuff the truck, and we take a whole truckload of stuff over there. It's that kind of thing that you can do. Now, are there more things we could be doing in all of these categories? Of course. And that's where these things become the plumb line, where we look at them and say, are we doing them? Can we do them more? Can we do them better? And when we come to our annual meeting, when we're looking at what do we want to do over the next year, then we hold up that mission statement. We hold up. Okay, let's just go backwards for a minute. We hold up the vision statement. We hold up the mission statement. And it allows us to see whether or not we're doing what we should be. That's what our mission statement is for. Okay, then we'll do this. There we go. Hey! Because we will be having our annual general meeting after church today. And we use those, and we use things like this from Scripture that say that the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, to us who are being saved, the power of God. How are we doing with that? How are we talking to people about being Christ-centered? How are we reaching out in the community, as well as to our own churches, to learn and grow in our faith? For the foolishness of God is wiser than men. That's what it said in the Corinthians passage today. It's how... We look at that and say, how can we be as wise as we can be, knowing that God will call us in different ways to fulfill God's mission here? The question is, do we trust in God and what God is calling us to do? And are we doing the things that we say we're trying to do when we look at our annual meeting, when we look at our reports, all the reports, the wonderful reports that tell us all the things that we have been doing? And I hope you've read yours. And if not, well, you're going to have a few minutes when they rearrange the front and get our coffees that maybe have a glance through it. It's easy to say, oh, we didn't do anything this year. Oh, that COVID, it's all so awful. But when you start looking at the calendar and figuring out what we actually did, when they start writing the reports, you realize that we have been doing a lot. And we've had to learn new ways of doing it. Yes but you're still doing it. You're still living out your vision and your mission for being a church here in this place. And you need to look at what you've done and dream of what you could do. Thanks be to God. So you can think about some of those things. You could conceivably read a little bit of the report, but I'd like you to listen to Louise playing well, they, they, I'm pretty sure looking at them that, they, that Louise, I don't think that they were reading it while I was preaching, but, but you know, if it's down here, you know, anyway, we have given of our offering and given of our best to God, and we thank you for that, some by par and some by putting it on the plate, and that's how you help to advance God's kingdom here. So let's think for a few minutes about what else you can do with your lives.
give you thanks for the many gifts that you have given to us. Grant that the gifts that we have returned to you this day may be used along with us to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks this day. We thank you for the gifts that you do give us. The gifts of family and friends. The gifts of a warm house to live in and food on our table. There's a lot of people that don't have any of those things. Lord, especially when we had that so, such cold snap this last week, we were thinking about those who don't have any place to go to have a warm meal, those that don't have a roof over their head, not even a tent. We were trying to figure out where to find a nook or a corner someplace that will at least cut the wind. It would help us to be mindful of people who are having those kind of difficulties and, and to try and work towards solutions where at least people have a warm meal and a roof over their head for the night. We think about the people who are suffering through war, who don't, who don't know if somebody's going to drop a bomb in their house. And then what? And then where will they go? What will they do? who that they know will be hurt. Not easy, Lord. It's easier to just say it's way over there and not turn the television set on because it's hard. Because it could be us. So Lord, help us to think about that. These are all your children, every last person on this planet. Out of what we have, can we help them? Lord, be with us. Help us to learn and to grow to be your people. to see those who need help, to hear them, to reach out with our hands and help. But first, Lord, you've got to change us and make us into that kind of people. Lord, we pray these things in the name of Jesus, who came to show us you and how much you care and who taught us to pray together singing. Our final hymn is number 512 in the hymn book. The words will be on the screen. Lord, you give the Great Commission, verses 1, 3, and 5.
stay here in peace, stay for our meeting, and then go, and go into Christ's world the way that you are called to go. May the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, and the Holy Spirit keep you this day and always. Amen.